This is the Besotted Pride of West London podcast coming to you uh, in the virtual joint a couple of days after the Brighton game and the day before we head up to Old Trafford to hopefully complete the double over Manchester United. I was just saying to myself uh, the other day, we're still able to do the double over Man United, Man City and Liverpool and it's just, it's just bonkers. Um, doing it's another matter but we're, we're in it. We're in it. Joining me this afternoon is Matt the Allard. Allard, how are you, Mr. Allard? I'm oh, very well. Very well indeed. Um, it was a, a cracking game on Saturday. Um, shame the result didn't quite go our way. But I think it was kind of a... a well, I don't know, it probably wasn't a fair result if you look at the XG, but it felt no. like a fair result, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I mean, that's, that's, that was the first question, really. I mean, now the dust has settled on it, and, you know, you're right, it was a, a really entertaining game. It was uh, a great away day, Brighton usually is. The sun came out in bits, and it was, you know, it was chilly in bits. I think we had all, you know, typical spring, we had all, all four seasons in one. Uh, and But, you know, most importantly, Brentford really put on a performance, I thought, you know, to go ahead through the times against Brighton, I thought, took, took, some, took some balls. Um, we, we proved again we, we can create chances against the very best, and I thought Brighton really, you know, over the two games, they, they really are amongst the best we've played. You know, looking back, Matt, now as I said, you know, now the dust has settled. How do you kind of see that that point and that in the performance? I think it's a good point, really. You know, I think um, I think there's always more than one way to look at a game, and you can look at it and say, you know, we're three two up, and and we're in the closing minutes of a game, and we don't close it out, and you know, but it, it was unlucky, the penalty, wasn't it? I mean, it, it, people put their bodies on the line and sometimes their arms get in the way, which is what happened. Um, and then, you know, there's another way of looking at the game and saying that, like you just said, you know, Brighton are the... I, I really do think they're one of the best teams we've played this year. They're, they're very, very good at ball retention. Um, they they pass brilliantly. They're as good a passing... What? Who? who two better passing sides in the league? Maybe Man City, Arsenal? Is anybody else better, do you think? No, I, I don't think, you know, I, I think Arsenal, uh, we saw them at their best at, at Brentford. They were OK-ish um, at uh, the Emirates. Man City, obviously, we didn't see them at their best, did we? Um, we beat them. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah, I think, you know, on, on, on games that we've been involved in, I, I don't think, you know, I, I, I don't think the team's impressed me more than they have. So, yeah, I, I'm delighted to come away with a point. Looking back, but you're right. At the time, just a just a couple more minutes and just you know a little bit more um, luck, I guess. Then uh, then we get all three. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I suppose you can throw Newcastle in the mix. They're, they're a decent pass inside, aren't they? But you know, I mean, I mean, they're they're much better than Tottenham. Um, oh god, and, yeah. and they're playing better than Liverpool, really, at the moment. So so you can you can make a. And I know this isn't a Brighton podcast. No, it's a Brentford podcast. But you can make a you know a really good argument for them to, you know, possibly get that fourth Champions League place. Wouldn't that be brilliant? I mean, it really would. You know, and yeah. you know, I know we're kind of embroiled in the battle for seventh and eighth with them at the moment. But I, I think they're they're better than that, and we've got to prove that we we are too. Um, it's going to be it's going to be tougher for us. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, yeah they stand every chance of really breaking some records this year. And uh, you know, I wish I, I wish them well. I've got nothing against them. So uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm, not sh- I'm, I'm not sure Matthew Benham shares your uh, your no, wishes. No, pro- probably not. But you know, I, I, his beef's different to mine. You know, I can't yeah. I can't share the same gripes with with, with Bloom that he does. Um, I just think they're both two. Well, I think we, we you know, they're two exceptional teams with two incredible owners that are kind of just. You know, I hope they're probably, you know, ebbing each other on to greater and greater success. It's a, I, I think what's really interesting is that they're they're like a front foot team. You know, they they try and control games and they try and win games by controlling games, which is more or less the opposite of what we're doing at the moment. Um, and it feels like they've moved to a to a, a, a level ahead of us, which you know they've always been two or three years ahead of us, maybe you know, maybe three or four. And it, does, it feels like they've sort of taken it to the next level, which maybe is a level we can aspire to in a couple of years. Um, it, it, their performance kind of reminded me of our... You know, like when we were in the championship and we used to run games and control games and 
pass teams out of games but not always win it. It, it, it feels like we've sort of flipped from that. We've recognised where we were in the Championship and now we've moved up into the Premier League and we've recognised that we're not going to outpass and outplay teams, albeit sometimes we try that when we go 4-3-3 three, three against some of the teams nearer the bottom. And, um, and, it, and it, it's sort of a flip to, what, to how we did play you know, three or four years ago. And I, I, I hadn't really, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd really thought that through so much until recently where I really, you know, people are starting to call us a bit of a long ball team and stuff like that. I don't think we're a long ball team. I think we're a counter-attacking team. I think long ball teams for me are, you know, are more where you, where you throw three big blows, you, where you play where you play a centre forward on the right wing and the left wing and up front and um, you just love balls towards Mate, them. You can't get much long, longer ball than their equaliser, their first equaliser from the goalkeeper. Yeah, you know, do you know what and, I mean? You and, just got you got and, to do what you got to do. You know. And, and 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 I look at that and I think that isn't for me. That's a counter attack goal. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> not. It's not the long balls for me are those sort of diagonal balls hit when you overload a quarter of the pitch. You know, they're long balls. I, I, I the, we play counter attacking football. I think more so than than I would say long ball football. Um, and um, and Brighton. Were exemplary at it for their for their first goal. It was um, it was almost a classic Brentford goal in some respects. Wasn't yeah, it? A great even, pass by the goalkeeper, um, and then and then you know break through and um, and you could imagine Wiesa doing that or Bumo doing that as well. It was yeah, um, yeah it was yeah. it was a great goal. And, and if you, if you're going to be harsh, you can say they lumped it in for the second as well. Lumped, yes, lumped it could, in right into could. the mixer. <laughs> yeah, you could. It was a bit of a lump. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a good cross, wasn't it? And um, yeah. I. It was a cross we should have stopped, if we're brutally honest. Um, it was sort of like, it was one of those sort of, you, you, when you think back to, um, you, you, all footballers have their weaknesses. We know what Jensen's weakness is, and that probably showed up one of his weaknesses, if, if that makes sense, you know? Not yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, yeah, they do. Um, we, we kind of had two or three, though, didn't we? I mean, you know, I, I, I listened back to the podcast after the game, and I, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit harsh on, on Hickey there. I know, I, I, I called him out as having a, you know, a right stinker. Um, you've got a bit more of a tactical brain than, than me. Did he have a stinker? I think I, I, I think the problems came down that side um, for um, for various reasons. I mean, I think it's um, I don't I, I think Matoma's a very very good player, so he's not going to be easy to defend against. And I think that uh, I think Rico had the same problems against Solly Marsh. You know, it, it, I, I don't think Hickey was it was exclusively Hickey's fault. I thought the back three was interesting. We we it, it, so if you think of that back three, it's two left footers and a right footer, which ideally in your back three you want Pontus to play as your middle of the back three because then he's less likely to get caught out by sort of marauding wingers. But because I think because Pontus is right footed and we've had that balance of Pinnock playing in the middle, when we brought Pontus back in, rather than push Pinnock out to the right, which I think was the way we played when we had those three as the back three before, we, we pushed Pontus out to the right. And and, and I think that probably was part of the part of Hickey's problems as well, was that I, I, I'm not sure Pontus probably if Pontus needs to play, it's going to be as the the centre of the three. I'm, I'm not sure you can push him out on the right. I just because he lacks a he, la he lacks a lot of pace. Did you expect a, a change of shape at half time? No, I didn't. I, I I wasn't really sure what we could do. I thought if we go four three. I didn't really think that helped us defend against the wingers, albeit that it would push because we were we were playing five three two. You know, you talk about three five two or five three two. Well, we try and play three five two um, and get our wing backs up. But I thought we got pinned back a bit and we played five three two. So if you'd have changed it tactically and gone four three three, um, maybe maybe you'd have got an extra player further up the pitch. But I wasn't really. I I, I don't know. They might have sliced us open even more. Um, so I, I wasn't sort of screaming for a tactical change at half time. I know it's I I, I Rico ventured over to the right um, once or twice as well. I, I think they, you know, obviously, as you said, Matoma's exceptional. Um, you know, he's, he's another speed freak. I don't think I don't think Hickey will come up against a, a trickier, uh, you know, winger. Um, well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't. You know, Matoma's on, on top of his game. Um, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of Japanese tourists. I don't know if you saw them outside yeah. the ground afterwards. They, you know, there was queues and queues and queues. You know, really long queues, almost the length of the ground, um, for waiting for him. Um, so, you know, he, he's a he's a real star there. Maybe, maybe if you do go four three three with Hickey as right back, maybe 
Hickey doesn't start, he's not as far up the pitch, so he's almost facing Matoma rather than chasing him. Maybe that helps in some in some elements. I think I think we missed Yanel's energy in midfield, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. You know, coming on, um, I think I think that, that you know that could have been a good change. But I, um, I I I thought a point was always going to be a good result at Brighton, and like you said at half time, it's you know if it, if if we've got a point at half time. Do we want to change it or do we... Didn't feel like we were... Were we sitting ducks? Maybe a little bit. But but we do like that. We do like to go into that sort of low block and um, and we, we back ourselves in it. And we almost, we almost, you know, we almost more than got away with it. Almost won it. It's true. It's true. And we, were, we weren't last on Match of the Day. Um, and I don't know if you saw Match of the Day. I mean, the big lots of big news this weekend. Obviously, Brendan Rodgers got sacked at and Leicester. Um, Graham Potter got sacked at Chelsea. Um, but the biggest news of the weekend was Mika Richards apologised to Brentford for, 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 for calling us bang average. And, you know, he, he, he seemed to properly have his tail between his legs. He didn't even, didn't even laugh. He was, he was deadly serious, which is really unlike him. Did you, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. I wondered if he got a little bit of stick in the sort of the pre-recording the pre, um, um, chat from, from the other, from, you know, from, from the others. That were on the show, uh, but it was good. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a real sort of, it was a real recognition of, of of saying, you know what, Brentford, they're doing really well, and and let's be honest, you know, when you look at that relegation scrap, we're we're a level ahead of it, aren't we? And we've moved a level ahead. Um, yeah. And, and and I thought that's you know that effectively, I think that's what you can see now. Um, sometimes I think when you try and you can't watch all the football all the time. Do you know what I mean? So. So you sort of make these assumptions rather than actually you say what you see because you might not watch that many Brentford games or whatever. So, so you yeah. make you make bad assumptions. I, th- I think you made bad assumptions. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's best to have some knowledge when you have an opinion on something. You know, <laughs> well, when, like you're, when, said, you're a, when you're a pundit, at least I'm telling. <laughs> like I said, bad assumptions. Yeah, yeah, no, fair play to him. And uh, I, I, I did rewind it just to make sure I wasn't hallucinating. And he, he, he did say it. So yeah, fair, fair play. We, you know, we, we move on. Um, well, do we? Do we though? Do we? So, well, uh, we'll see. We're, yeah, we'll see. We, you know, we, we need to. But, but you know, the thing is, with us, we have to. We have to continue these these high standards now. You know, it's uh, the minute you slip, the minute they start going oh, third season syndrome and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're 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 going toe to toe with Brighton, which is a brilliant place to be, and uh, the Amex was a brilliant place to be. I have to say during the game. So let's head back there very briefly. Let's get some opinion from fans straight after the game and then back in the pub, back in the centre of Brighton. Taking a point away here is amazing. Well done, Bees. Great game, yeah, loved every minute of it. Yeah. Lucky to come away with Jordan at the end, I think. But I'll take that. What a fantastic game. I mean, it was a great game of football, but to be feeling disappointed off with that referee's decision towards the end, gutted. They're a, they're a very good side and they are where they are. That's why they're sick. Take the point. We did really well. We're four, three or four years behind them in terms of team and structure and everything. So to do that today, they did really well in the end. Hung on really well. Second half, dug in. Did all right. Uh, second half, they battered us, let's be honest. Raya was outstanding. Um, they're a great side, Brighton. I think they're the best team I've seen us play. They, they, they play great football. McAllister in midfield is world class. Two wide men are very, very good. I'm not sure Rico and uh, Aaron would have had their run around like, like they did today for most forward lines. If someone had said that was Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea in the old days, you'd have kind of gone, Fair I can enough. see it. They're a good side, very good side. We were under a lot of pressure today, more than I can remember, I think, in any game this season. Uh, Brighton are an absolutely top class side, so that is a. A, a really good result for us. And there you have it. The fans' opinions straight after the match. And, yeah, there's a, there was a, a mixed bag there. I think, you know, they just underlined what, what a good point it was and just how tantalising and close it really was that uh, we could have come away with all three points. Um, it would have been a bit of a robbery, but, you know. What did you, to just have it, I mean, in terms of VAR, what did you make of the penalty decisions, the two hickey? Do you think it, they, they got them sort of both right? It's funny because... Uh, I, I had a, I, I had a little, um, Billy went, Billy said, it was, you know, he was right next to me and he said, uh, 
penalty, definite penalty. He, he's moved his moved his hand towards the ball there, and I went. I said to him, "How the hell do you see that from here?" And it was because we were right at the other end, and uh, it just proves how dodgy my eyesight is at the moment. So I'm going to the opticians, and fair play to Bill, he called it out. He was he was the absolute VAR merchant, so he's obviously got bionic vision where I haven't. So. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'm, unfortunately, he's uh, he's got a bit of an issue, and I hope, hope everything's all right at home, Bill. Um, hope son, hope son's okay. Um, I'm sure he will be, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully he'll be back with us on Saturday for the Newcastle game. So we will move on briefly because we're gonna we're gonna have like a a, a brief post Brighton pre Man United podcast now, and then we'll come back to you uh, later in the week probably Thursday or Friday morning more probably and uh, preview the Newcastle game from having one game a month what it's what it seemed like recently we're going three games in a week which is uh, quite quite some hectic schedule especially as we're um, down in Brighton up in Manchester and in, uh, on home turf against Newcastle three of our probably trickiest matches I don't know if you saw the Man United game on Sunday, Matt, but they were they were kind of uh, very average. They they were the kind of Man United that we hope we come up against tomorrow. It looked like they had their eye on Europa Cups and FA Cups rather than chasing the Champions League place. I, I know that they wouldn't have gone into that wanting to to lose or been sort of half-hearted in in, in it, but it looks like they've got. Good chances of winning more silverware, and uh, you know Newcastle were okay. You know they, they they did what they had to do. You know they well, maybe a bit better than okay, but you know nothing truly special. Nothing nothing that's sort of title contenders, that's for sure. So uh, you know we, we come up against them at Old Trafford, which is our second visit in the Premier League, um, and another another one of those performances last year. Well, we, I don't think we did ourselves justice on on the big stage. Uh, we, we kind of went down with a, with a bit of a damp squib, and it was a damp, damp old night as well. What, what's, what's your thoughts going into uh, to the, the game up at Old Trafford, Matt? Well, I think I, I agree with you about about the um, the Newcastle Man U game. Um, I thought Man U looked like um, it was weird. You know, like they turned a corner. It looked like they sort of turned another corner, but it's going the wrong way again a little bit at the moment. Um, I. I hope that doesn't come back to haunt me. Uh, um, but I'm not saying that anything like they were at the beginning of the season when, when they were pretty diabolical, if we're honest. Um, but I do think this is probably a better time to play them than I would have thought a month ago. I, I was thinking that this fixture was sort of looming and I was thinking, oh, we're going to do well to get anything out of it. I think having watched that game Sunday, two things occurred to me. Um, and we're not going to talk about the Newcastle game so much here because we've got time to do that after the Man U game. But Newcastle, I thought, looked really good. Um, I do think um, the centre forward, I, um, Isaac, I think he's a he's mm. a brilliant player. I think he's a really, really brilliant player. I noticed him in the Euros three years ago. But he, 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 to some extent, was the difference between the two teams, plus a bit of sort of pace out wide. Man U looked a little bit ordinary. Weghorst, you feel like we should be able to deal with him. You feel like, you know... He, He's, he's not going to worry us for pace. Um, he's just a sort of a bit of an old-fashioned centre forward, albeit he's been part of the reason that you know Manu have started putting in you know at least some sort of consistent performances. Um, but you know they're missing Casemiro. Casemiro's still out, isn't he? Wednesday. Yeah, he's on a he's on a extended ban, isn't he? He's uh, yeah. I think it's part and, of that. And without sort of saying that Casemiro is the sort of you know the. Um, the be all and end all for United. I think he's a massive miss for them. Um, they may be missing Ericsson a little bit as well at the moment. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like, I, I feel, it was weird last season, I felt relatively confident going into the game as well, but they just sort of, I don't know what happened last season with us at United. Ronaldo had sort of probably one of his last decent games. Um, and we, wasn't it in that game they didn't play a centre forward and we just we had three centre backs marking nobody and then <laughs> yeah. if well, I recall I, I they made about was, three number tens. Yeah. 
was their last game, last home game of the season, wasn't it? And I think they just wanted to put in a little bit of a shift, and they wanted yeah. to, you know, didn't, they didn't do a lap of honour, but it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I think it was a, a fairly sort of more um, impressive performance than their their fans had uh, become used to, because there was demos outside, Brentford fans got attacked. Hopefully, there's none of that. Well, there won't be any of that tomorrow, but. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that Man United will have, have a bit of a, bit of a sort of a mission to kind of undo the 4-0 defeat that they suffered at you know, the hands of us in that first home game of the new season, which you know I don't think any of us will ever forget being 4-0 up at the break against Man United. Um, but we go there, well, I think with a with a realistic chance of you know being at least undefeated against them this season, if not if not to to, to do the double, I think. Thomas Frank will be itching um, to kind of out tactic another of the of the of the big guns. It's, it's a real it's a real test for him as well as obviously the players tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely. Um, I I wonder how we approach it. I suspect we stick with a very similar side to the Brighton game. I would I'd be really surprised if we don't play three five two. That seems to be the way we play against teams that are above us in the league. I think that's probably pretty much where. The, the, you know, to some extent, where the split is. Um, I just, I, I wonder if we freshen it up a bit. I, Sharda, I wonder, you know, is it worth throwing him in the mix there? Do you know what I mean? Along, you know, do you maybe give a Bumo a, a, a rest? Because, like you said, the game's coming thick and fast just at the minute, you know, three games in a week. Um, I wonder, I, I don't think we will do that. I think we'll probably stick with what we know. Um, but, but maybe that's a little sort of twist that we could, we could throw in. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm itching to see more of Sharda, um, but I'm just not quite sure how he might fit in tomorrow. We've obviously got Roslev, who's, who's fit. Um, whether he's fit enough to start, um, we'll, we'll have to see. But, uh, yeah, you there, could, there, you, there are options there, mate. You could make an argument that Roslev could come in for, for either Pontus. I, I, I don't think he will, but he could come in for Pontus, or he could come in, you know, or he could come in as, as right wing back. Um, yeah, you, so you're, you're expecting Pontus to, to start again, yeah? Yeah, I, even though I, I think it's not great for the shape, um, I, I think he probably will because, I, I yeah, I think we're going to play three centre-backs. Um, I think, you know, the player that should really be playing in that position is Ayer. Um, and, and we have seen Roslev play there. You know, he has played there. I think he played there against Tottenham. Um, I think he may have played there against Man U in the 4-0 game. Mm. I might have that completely wrong. I've just pulled that from somewhere, but big, big game, big game, Mads. He's he's yeah, been part. Of, he's he's been part of all the massive performances and results, isn't he? He's yeah. he's, he's, he's he's a real unsung hero, isn't he? And yeah, he is. And it's no and it's no disrespect to Pontus either, because because I just think that Pinnock's going so well playing in what was Pontus's role. It's just difficult now to get you know to fit Pontus back into the team. Um, so it's no disrespect to him, and I, and, and there's always an argument that you want captain of the pitch but 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 there's so so, so if Roslev comes in he could play in either of those two positions um, and, then, and then there'll be a juggle in midfield because I would imagine I don't think Damsgaard will start tomorrow I think that might get juggled as well yeah there's 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 a you know chance you as you say that he might get rested but you know I'm not I'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure that there's that kind of competition in the middle at the moment without you know being in the mix, you know, it's it's, it's quite it's quite difficult. Um, you know, uh, Damsgaard has got the quality, and has got the class on his day. We've seen it, and uh, you know, I don't think any of our Brentford players will need reminding of what what tomorrow uh, means to us as a club. You know, you know, Man United fans will be rolling their eyes and going, "Oh, it's your cup final," but of, of course it is. You know, these games are you know legendary to us, and we're we're, we're going to enjoy every minute of them. Um, so uh, yeah, I, as I said to you earlier, I hope I hope we can go out there and do ourselves justice this year. So, what's your what's your predictions, old chap? Well, um, I was I, I'm sort of I've got an amount of confidence. You know, I think um, I think we can steal something there. Um, I I'm just hoping that we. And you talk about you know we turn up or whatever. I just hope we get the tactics right. Um, and, and and maybe if United do play with a uh, you know with a with a number nine this time, uh, maybe that will play to our strengths a little bit more um, rather than you know you know Ben Mee sort of chasing shadows, um, letting other 
punch up with Vegas. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 that because because that's kind of I think play, plays to our strengths. Um, and and like you said, Manu. I suppose there is an argument they do a decent. They do that they are due a decent. Um, I'm sort of sitting on the fence here, aren't I? Badly, I'm trying to the other. That they are due a due a decent performance, but. But from the last couple of games I've seen him play, I think we're more than going to be more than a match for him. Um, maybe not in possession and stuff like that, but in, but in terms of scoring goals and creating Gets a score. Gets a score. Um, I reckon one all tomorrow night. OK, well, yeah, so. I'll, t- I'll take that right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go 2-2, I'll go two, two, actually. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think there are going to be chances both ends. I think, you know, they, they are anything's possible we're capable of getting a batter in we're capable of getting a win and we're capable of getting a draw you know um it's 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 depending very much on what man united turn up and as you as you rightly say the tactics um thomas will be as i said itching to uh to prove prove his weight and um to prove his worth what 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 i think was noticeable is that i mean newcastle got them out wide didn't they i think to some yeah extent. Um, so you know, and, the, and, and, and their pace is, you know, was good as well. So, so maybe you know that it's about getting players forwards, and it's about getting a bit of, you know, getting the wing backs a bit further forwards. Essentially, that always leaves you, you know, potential to get um, to get caught out. But you know, you, you die by the sword. Whatever that's yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I'm always, I'm, I'm always wary of McTominay. I think he's a good player. Rashford's got, you know, he's got again afterburners and you know, Bruno Fernandez. And there's, there's, there's quality through, throughout that team. We're, we're going to be pushed. So, uh, but it's one I'm, I'm massively looking forward to. So, uh, setting off, setting off early afternoon, and uh, um, hope the traffic's, hope the traffic's nice to us. So, uh, yeah. So have a, have a safe trip up there to all you Bees fans that are probably listening to this on your way. Um, listen out, as I said, to um, a pre-Newcastle podcast. Um, that should be coming. That probably comes Friday morning. So uh, we, we're going to wrap this one up now. We've done our predictions. We, we had a really good day out in Brighton. We're hopefully going to have a really good night in Manchester if you're staying over. Um, there's, some, there's some cracking venues and some really good pubs that open quite late. So have, have a good beer and hopefully there will be plenty to celebrate. As I said to, uh, to you earlier, I hope Billy and his family are all all right. And um, we look forward to having him back on the podcast on Friday. So thanks for joining me, Matt. And um, enjoy the game tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. I'll see you up there. I'll, I'll be on the train. And, um, and, and like you said, best wishes to um, Bill and the family. Speak to you soon. Come on, you bees. Come on, you bees. You bees.